Okay, so good evening and welcome to this another lesson of classical physics. My name is Shonak and you're watching this stream live on my channel, Physics for Students. So uh, we would continue discussing what we were discussing yesterday, but this would be uh, a kind of a, a last, uh, you know, uh, class for what is called dynamical systems and the evolution of dynamical systems. Also, what I would like to tell is that uh, some of the subscribers were asking me that, sir, what is the thing that you are covering in this lecture? What are the what are the episodes and what are the uh, you know chapters that you would cover? So I'm going to talk about that. That what is the total amount of coverage that I am planning for this video? So till now, what we have done is that uh, we have actually covered what is called a finite amount of system. That means some of them has one state, two state, etc. Okay. Before I forget, before I forget. Uh, let me share a very important news with you. Uh, just hold on for a second. I would like to show you uh, the, where is that? Uh, just a second. Just uh, to take it up from my WhatsApp. Okay. So the announcement is that on the 28th of January, okay, which is a Sunday. Again, I repeat, it is 28th of January, which is a Sunday, uh, a very renowned physicist, I would say professor, Professor Somitra Sengupta, he will be coming live on my channel to speak mostly about general theory of relativity, cosmology and black holes. Okay, let me share the screen with you so that you can have a clear understanding what I am aiming to. And this is a very, uh, you know, important and for me, I would say is a very, 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 uh, you know, auspicious occasion because I have never found anybody from general theory of relativity who would be coming and, uh, uh, yeah, so here it is. Okay, so you can see uh, uh, Professor Somitra Sengupta, who is a very important personality. And not only that, I hope you can see that if I can zoom it, uh, you can see that he is basically working at Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science. And he is taking the position of Amal Kumar Ray Chaudhary, uh, chair professor in the School of Physical Sciences. So when I will be, I will be coming back to Calcutta and I will be definitely meeting him. So we know all about Ray Chaudhary equation, right? And we know also about why Ray Chaudhary equation is very important in terms of Penrose Hawking theorem, gravitational singularity, and so on. So I would request you not to miss this particular event, 28th of January, starting 8 p.m. Professor Somitra will be there and he will be talking and answering all the questions related to gravitational physics, cosmology. And you can search about Professor Somitra Sengupta. You will find he has written a huge amount of papers on uh, what you call uh, Randall Sundram model, uh, black holes, event horizon, uh, new uh, finding out new dimensions in Sagittarius, uh, a star, black hole, a lot of things. He is a very senior person, and most of the students who are at Indian Association, IESES, knows him. So this is just to announce you that he will be there, and you can ask him questions. He's a very friendly person, very senior, I mean to say. He used to work with high energy physics, and then he's told that, Shonak, I'm now doing only gravitational physics, general relativity, and cosmology. So let us make use of this event, 28th of January, with Professor Somitra. I think this would be a wonderful, engaging session all right on my channel. Okay, so uh, just to tell you that, uh, so what we would be doing is that we would uh, also, uh, till now, we have talked mostly about what is called the finite amount of states. That means a single state, two state, five state, six state. But there is no reason that why we cannot have a dynamical system. That means with an infinite number of states occurring at one specific time. So if you can imagine a line with an infinite number of discrete points, say, for example, uh, something like this, then what we can see as a rail track or something which has got an infinite sequence of station in both direction. And how does it look like if I got infinite number of stations uh, which uh, uh, which is uh, looks like it would look something like this, right? I hope this is visible to you. So I would get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. 
And uh, say, for example, to describe this kind of a system, we can label the points along the line by integers, which I have done one, two, three, four. And in the same way, we label the discrete points. Now, we have already known that the notation that we have seen in the last class, which is basically n. I'm so sorry. This should be a little bit <laughs> thicker one. It should be this n. Okay. Let me write in a straight way. Yeah. This n. So this n is actually used for discrete time stem. Uh, I mean, the steps. And let us say that uh, for each point, I mean, to say for example, each of this point, I'm using a capital N. Okay. For each of this point, I'm using a capital N. And N is basically for the discrete time. That means the jumps that we will do. So in, in, in order to track the history, what we can do, we can measure a function, which is something that capital N with within bracket small n, right? This one followed by this one. And in this way, we can tell uh, the place along the track that uh, which is the n at every time. So where it is here, 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 we can use this, this particular function and we can understand all of this. Okay. Now, the second thing is that if we want to shift the uh, dynamical law, say, for example, if we want to show how it looks like, then we can look something like this. This is the earlier one. This is the earlier one. And I have made another one, this one. So it goes in this direction. If I take this kind of a marker, so it goes in this minus one dot, dot, dot. That means it's going in this direction. And one, two, three goes in this direction. Now, what typically happens in this kind of a situation is that uh, if we want to express it in terms of a rule, then, then there are diff different possibilities which comes. The first possibility is what is called this one. N, N plus one, this one. I will explain it what it is. Then I can have this kind of a possibility, which is N minus one. This can also happen. N minus one means that it is going particularly in this direction. Minus one, that means it's this direction. So this would lead to this direction. Then I can also have another possibility, which is this direction, okay, which has got N plus two. I can also have another, which is called this one. This can also be another possibility. Okay. And also what I can do is that I can have N, N plus one. I can take this one. So I can write capital N. Capital N, remember, is this one, which I'm denoting. And the N is the number of discrete small steps. So I can take another possibility, which could be N. And within bracket, I can put N plus one. And then I can close the bracket. And I can say equals to capital N, and then I can put N squared, N squared. That means whatever happened, it will be squared. So in this way, we can take up enough amount of possibilities, which I am not showing. But you see, in this kind of an equation, say, for example, if I take this particular equation, this particular, the first one, this equation, N, N plus 1, N, N plus 1, right? So what it happens is that eventually to get to the every other point by either going up in the future. So whenever, wherever you start, you will eventually get to every other point by either going to the future or going to the past. This equation tells that either you are going to the future or you are going to the past. So n, n plus 1 equal to n, n plus 1, that, uh, that means this equation will actually tell you to get at every point, either I go to the future or I go to the past. Right, So we say that the, there is a single infinite circle. There can be infinite amount of circles with this. Similarly, this particular equation, for example, this one, n, n, and n plus 2. Okay, n, n plus 1, n, n plus 2. What does this equation tell? This tells that if I start with an odd value of n, then I will never get an even value and vice versa. So if I start with the odd value of n, say, for example, if I start with... Uh, say, for example, 3. So this would be 3 plus 1. And this would be, again, uh, say, for example, n. Then I put as 3 and 3 plus 2. So you see that it gets into a kind of an odd value. This would get into an odd value. So the first equation, this particular equation, is actually what it is telling. It is telling that uh, eventually you will go to every other point by either going to the past or to the future. And there is an infinite circle. Whereas this particular equation, which I, okay, let, just let, let me remove this one so that it doesn't look a little bit messy. So n, n plus 2 and this one. So if I take this kind of an equation, this equation, 
uh, let me highlight it in a different color. This kind of an equation, if, if I take it, then what this equation tells is that if I start with an odd value of n, that means say 1, 3, 1, whatever the odd value it is, it is never going to get an even value. And even even value, I am never going to get an odd value. Right? Okay. So this is something. So we can add and uh, find something also like this. Let me make it a little bit bigger for you so that you can see this. Right? So what this equation, this one, uh, what it tells, it actually tells that if I start with a number, then we just keep on proceeding and proceeding and proceeding and so on. So that is what this figure tells about. On the other hand, if we start at A or B, then we can cycle in between them, right? You can see this, this is actually cycling. So if I take a kind of a, uh, say, for example, uh, I mean to say a box like this, and if I make a copy of box like this, so the cycling means what happens is that I am going from this to this, and again, I'm coming back from this to this. This is what is typically called cycling. Okay. So I can go infinitely over here and you can infinitely over here and this would keep on cycling. So if I mention this as A and this as B, it will go on cycling. So that is what it is. Okay. Another thing which becomes very important in this kind of a single state system is what we called that cycle and conservation laws. Now, let me explain you what I mean to say that when the state space is separated into several cycles, then this comes as a conservation law. So here is a kind of an understanding. When the state space is separated into several cycles, the system remains in that cycle where it starts. And each cycle has its own, because everything has got a dynamical rule, this uh, cycle has also got a dynamical rule. And they are all part of the same system because they describe the same dynamical system again and again. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, thank you. You, you can keep it over here. No problem. Yeah, that's fine. I'll just take the cup. So I'm having my coffee a little bit late today. <laughs> okay. So each system has a, uh, you know, what we call is a dynamical system, which goes and all. Well, let us see a quick figure, then we will uh, understand it in a better way. So here you see, this is what it's called the conservation laws. Now you might be kind of thinking that, is it the same law of conservation of energy, etc. that I will come to, uh, come to you later. But this is what is called the law of conservation. So each states one and two belong to its own cycle. That means if I start with a state over here, say for example, then I again go back over here. So I two will start with two, I go over here. So for here I go over here and then again I go over here. The same keeps on happening. So what I'm trying to say is that whether a dynamical law divides a space space into separate cycles into this type of a separate circle, then there is something, there is a memory, which is, a, memory means it actually remembers what it starts. And this is called the conservation law. So let me uh, put it in the text so that you can get it a little bit more clearer. So here it is. I hope this is visible to all of you. Can you see this? There is a memory of uh, which cycle they start in and such a memory is basically called the conservation law. That means it actually tells us uh, that something is kept intact. Nothing actually goes out. So, for example, uh, let me uh, you know give you another example. Okay, let me make it a little bit smaller over here. Now, what I'm trying to tell you over here is that if I want to make the conservation law quantitative, that means in quantity, if I want to say this conservation law as say, for example, C, let this conservation law be C. That means if this kind of a figure, if I see this kind of a figure, which is uh, uh, given to you, okay, I will uh, show you another figure, not this one. Yeah, this, this one, plus one and this. So let me copy it over here and I will put it in the next so that it becomes clearer. Yeah. Here it is. Let me make it now. It's smaller. And this much, this one becomes better. Okay. So if I take, so here you have already got the definition. There is a memory of which cycle they start and such a memory memory is called a conservation law. Now, if I take this kind of a figure, say for example, and I want to quantitatively define, that means I want to give a quantity, quantity and I tell, tell this quantity as C. So in this kind of a figure, which is this figure, which I, which I am mentioning it to you, then these three cycles can be labeled as 
c equals to what? It would be plus 1, right? For this part, this part. And c will be equals to minus 1 for this part. Okay? And c would be equal to 0 for this part. I mean, it's just giving a kind of an, a simple example. Plus 1, minus 1, and 0. This type of system which actually remains. So whatever the value of key, uh, Q, it remains the same for all time. Why? Because the dynamical law does not allow to jump from one cycle to another. So now whatever the value remains, it should be conserved. Okay. I will like to uh, put it in the next uh, page over here. I will take this one over here. Okay, so this is our dynamical law, which is conserved. And I am putting this in text. It should be C. I'm so sorry. Here it is. Does not allow. I have given the quantitative values over here, right? Plus 1, minus 1, and 0. Now I'm trying to mention this value clearly over here. I'm so sorry. This should be, yeah. Whatever the value of C remains, that means this particular C, what I am trying to mention over here, this particular C equals to plus 1 conservation law. This would be equals to minus 1, this conservation law, and C equals to 0. Now, this is very fundamental. I hope you are getting my point. This conservation law, what we learn in terms of physics, that is... Energy can neither be created nor destroyed actually comes from the state of the system. So here it is. Whatever the values of C, whatever be the value of C, it is plus 1, minus 1, 0. The, it remains the same for all, all time because the dynamical law does not allow jumping from one cycle to another. That is, if you go to the previous examples, I mean to say the previous classes, here you see all these systems are jumping from one plot to another. I hope you remember all these values you see here, they are all jumping from one state to another. Here, in terms of conservation law, things are not jumping from one place to another. That is why it is conserved. That means there is a memory, as I told you. Here you can see the text, which is a very important, this one. There is a memory. Okay, I will copy this and paste it over here also. So here it is. There is a memory of which uh, there is a cycle and this memory is called the conservation. Memory in the sense that it remembers the state from where it comes and from where it goes. Such a memory is called a conservation law. And this is how it is. So we can say, we can say that C is actually conserved. Now, this actually covers our today's discussion in terms of dynamical laws. And next in the next class, we will summarize and then we will go. But uh, what is uh, something very important which I have uh, I need to explain is that there is something. OK, let me remove it. Now, there is something which is called limits of precision. Now, limits of precision in the sense I am saying that, for example, if we get a state, any particular state. Yeah, absolutely, Richard. So you, you can relate those things to each other. And as you know, Richard and others, this is taught in a very different way, law of conservation of energy, energy, this, that. But it actually comes from the uh, questions of the state. Now, what I'm trying to tell you next is that as we started with Laplace idea that there should be a Laplace demon who actually knows everything. And given those uh, situations, they can expand and tell the future. Now, if I say, for example, imagine a die, for example, if I got a die, okay, and die, that die has got millions of faces, and each of these faces are have got a symbol, okay, for example, whatever would be the symbol, and this actually den denotes a single digit integer. Now, what I'm trying to tell is that if I have got a system, so for example, this coffee cup, okay, this has got a coffee this has got a temperature, this has got a pressure, everything. What I am saying that if I know this kind of a system right over here, this is quite hot, sorry. So if I know this kind of a system, then given that predictability, I can predict the future. 
But in certain cases, as you see, that the limits of precision is something is that given all those things, it is not always very easy to predict those systems. That means if I know the dynamical law and if I'm able to recognize the initial condition, initial level, then I could predict the future history of this cup or that dime. But in the real world situation, you know, my dear viewers, it is very um, difficult because the st space of states is not only a collection of this coffee cup or a molecules, etc. It is very, uh, I would say, continuously growing and infinite. Richard Norling has been talking of Mandelbrot state and chaos. So I would like to take this also in account chaos, etc. These are very infinite and continuously growing. So what I'm trying to tell is that in it, it, it is labeled as a collection of real numbers as coordinates of a particle, because I will just show you why I'm telling this. So if I want a coordinate of particles and I use real numbers, right? Real numbers are so dense that every one of these real numbers is arbitrarily close value to an infinite number of neighbors. So between 1 to 1.5, there are huge and millions and trillions, maybe infinite number of numbers. So the ability to distinguish the neighboring values of these numbers, which is from 1 to 1.5, for any real observer is limited. So what I'm trying to make a point is that we cannot know the initial conditions with infinite precision. We cannot know the initial conditions with infinite precision. In most of the cases, you will see a very tiny difference in the initial conditions. The starting state leads to eventually a huge difference in outcomes. And this phenomena is called chaos. Again, this is very, uh, you know, co uh, co coincidence that Richard has actually told what I was trying to tell. The DE system, mandelbrot board, logistics states and chaos. And that is why, you know, one of my favorite quotation of Paul Dirac is that you pick, pick a, you pluck a flower on earth and you move the farthest star. I put it in my channel, this new uh, channel, uh, you know, banner which I have made. I put up that is a favorite quotation. So logistics, iteration, chaos, what Richard Norling is telling, that means a very tiny difference eventually leads to a lot of changes in the outcomes. So this is what is called chaos. So if a chaotic system, then it implies that whatever be good in terms of resolving power, maybe the time over which the system is predictable is limited. That means perfect predictability we cannot achieve because we have got a limited in our resolving power. So that's it. I will now like to show you what is the coverage of this course. I mean to say you might be expecting that, okay, what am I covering? What actually I am telling to this? Have a look onto that. This is the overall coverage of this course, but it is not exactly. I will show you further details. We have covered almost the nature of classical physics, and I will be taking a quick whirlwind tour next class to give you a summary because this is the stepping stone and i hope you have enjoyed it because this is something uh, different which i calculate uh, ca collected from various notes professors leonard saskine's videos and made it to you i am going to cover up motion the integral calculus next the dynamics differential calculus then the systems more than one uh, particle that that is what i was talking about energy the principle of least action, symmetries, and conservation laws, Hamiltonian mechanics, phase space fluids, and Gibbs Liouville theorem, Poisson brackets, angular momentum and symmetries, and electric and magnetic forces. This is for the initial phase, but, but that is not all. Look into this. The overall detail would be again going back to measurement, that means metric system. I will be covering motion along the straight line, vectors, motion in two and three dimensions, force and motion one force and motion two, kinetic and uh, energy and work, potential energy and conservation of energy, center of mass, linear momentum and rotation. After that, I would be covering rolling torque and angular momentum, equilibrium and elasticity, gravitation, not the relativistic part, but in general gravitation will be covered. Fluids, oscillations, I've given two parts of waves because I feel that waves are really interesting and there are a lot of things uh, and this actually leads to the basic of quantum physics. I'm also going to cover a little bit of thermodynamics, temperature, heat, the first law, 
the kinetic theory of grasses, gases, entropy, and the second law of thermodynamics. Then I will cover Coulomb's law, electric fields, Gauss's law, electric potential, capacitance, not much because I'm not good into electronics. So current and resistance circuits, I will try to cover as much as I can. Yes, magnetic fields due to current, I mean to say I can make up a separate uh, complete uh, video on what is called what do you call that? Uh, Maxwell's equation. I have a series of videos already made on Maxwell's equation, but I want to work more on that in live classes. You actually learn a lot. Induction and in, uh, uh, inductance, electromagnetic oscillations or uh, electric current. And finally, I'm going to end by this. Maxwell's equation, magnetism and matter, which I told, electromagnetic waves, images, interference. This would be related to, uh, I would say, optics. Then I would cover up relativity, but not that much, which I'm covering in other videos. Photons and matter, I would talk about de Broglie's hypothesis, etc. A little bit about the uh, atoms, the Bohr's uh, theorem, conduction of electricity in solids, nuclear physics, a little bit. I'm truly honest, I'm not good in nuclear physics. Energy from the nucleus and quark, leptons and the Big Bang. That would be an overall idea about those things. So these, these are, I would say, uh, very detailed understanding. Thank you, Richard. Uh, so this would be this would be overall. I mean to say these are basically the overview, but this would be covered in much details, force and motion. So I mean to say, see, uh, the, when, when I talk of this kinetic energy work, etc., this includes a lot of mathematics, which we'll be covering. Oscillation waves, this part, this waves is very good because it will lead you to what? The uh, foundation of quantum physics. Again, this Coulomb's law, electric law, these are okay. I mean to say these are absolutely classical. But magnetic field due to currents, again, I would try to cover something which relates to. <laughs> Once I ask you about an algebraic geometry to some wedge products by vector center from new foundation, it is very accessible. Great. Okay. I'm so sorry, maybe I have not been able to uh, give a proper answer to that. But if you have found it, Richard, uh, amazing. And then this part, I mean to say, once we cover up with this part, we uh, step into what is called modern physics. I mean to say modern physics in the sense, a little bit relativistic physics, where I will try to give the maximum equation, etc. Then we come into relativity and so on. So this is the overall plan. I mean to say this is, um, I will try to cover it by December 2024. This is the total span. Similarly, I am planning a general theory of relativity class. I mean to say step by step. Etc. And you see, I am not coming on Monday, Tuesday, etc. Uh, why? Because uh, I'm making a lot of plan. And uh, Monday, actually, went to have my favorite woodland shoes, Richard Miles, <laughs> because I was very fond of that. So finally, I could come uh, take up some time. So I rushed from my college and got hold of those wonderful shoes. And I'm fond of those woodland shoes, you know, big, uh, that type of heavy shoes. <laughs> so that's what. So I'm making a plan on all those things. And this plan is taking up my time. Because my this uh, I'm doing a new uh, you know doctoral also um, in a different kind of a subject. So my PhD uh, thesis is also requiring some time to prepare. Then I've got my college. Then I've got these things. Then I've got the other channel. So I'm a little bit tied up. But don't worry. This is the step by step approach. So that's it. So I hope you enjoyed today's lecture. We will cover up. I will try to come tomorrow or else Friday. A quick sum up about 15, 20, 15 minutes of whirlwind sum up on all those things of state of space, what we have done, a quick sum up so that if anybody is missing the other three lectures also, this would be. And what am I covering in the next class? I will tell you, wait, I've got my notes ready. Yeah, I will be covering spaces, vectors, and coordinate systems. That is what I do. So do let me know, Richard, how do you find uh, after I end this session in the comment box and others also, and let us not miss 28th of October, uh, sorry, <laughs> 28th of January session with Professor Somitra Sengupta. And he's a very knowledgeable person, a lot of gravitational physics questions you can ask. And I have not yet planned for my free, <laughs> yeah, thank you, for my free webinar on general relativity. But surely I'm going to take that. Do we need to follow any book for this course? No, Karan, I mean to say you can always follow any book. Whatever I am talking and telling, you can always consult books. I would never say that don't consult books. Always you are welcome. But uh, I mean to say this is the method which I do. And every time Karan and others, I would like to tell you, I will proceed two, three classes, again a sum up. Again two, three classes, again a sum up. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah okay so that is how i will uh, plan to do because as i told you if you have uh, uh, followed my earlier lecture that the good book is a book which covers up certain kind of a just a second Oh, so sorry a good book is something which will cover up certain chapters and then give a revision again cover up some chapters and then give a revision so i will always do that so current you can follow any book i won't say that don't follow my book my lectures are the best no absolutely i'm still a learner but you can follow the books but this is the step so i am planning one for classical physics one for complete course on general theory of relativity and third on quantum mechanics these are the three which are right on my table but i am also feeling a little bit on real analysis how will i do on proof reading because these are all keep going in my mind and i can really uh, make good classes to show you i i know those stuffs but again i don't know how will i do okay let let me plan so thank you very much for watching this do share the video as much as you can and tomorrow day after tomorrow so uh, the, the 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 my this facebook group uh, physics for student facebook.com physics for student no s that will keep you updating on what are the upcoming classes and in the community box and if you're there with my whatsapp because i don't think people are there in my whatsapp they don't see my story so i will try to update in the whatsapp also but this will be great thank you very much richard karan and everybody who's watching this stream thank you very much for watching and we'll be back soon good night and May the good Lord be with you.